So let's get right into the video. Now we're going to be learning how to do voice control, of course. So basically we're going to be saying the word jump and then the player is going to be jumping. Of course, this can be used for so many other things, but we're going to be using this for jumping. And as a setup, I already have this setup. We have a player and it has a behavior as a platform or object. And we also have a platform and this has a behavior of a platform. So of course the player can land on the ground. Of course, if we preview it, you'll see it will just fall on the ground. So that's good. So the next thing we want to do is actually download an extension that helps us with voice control. So I'm going to go into our project manager and then I'm going to go into extensions and we have the voice recognition API by Plankton Fun, a great community extension. So I'm going to install this into the project. And once you have it, you should see it on the left side and you can close it out. Now, the first thing we want to do is actually at the beginning of the scene, we want to immediately start listening. So I'm going to put go into our scene events and I'm going to go into condition, other conditions, scene, and then at the beginning of the scene, and we want to immediately start listening. So I'm going to go into add action. And if I scroll down in other actions, you'll see that voice recognition API. And we only have one action with the listens for speeches. Now, it has a bunch of different languages that you can choose from. In this case, I'm going to use US English. But whatever language you speak, depending on where you live, that's what you want to put. Because that will be based on the way you speak. So I'm going to go into OK. And we want to actually have a text object that it retrieves we have to have a text object that retrieves what we're saying. So we need to now make a text object. So I'm going to go into our scene and add a new object. It's going to be text. And I'm going to just name it result because we're basically getting the result text. So I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to drag it onto the scene and to the top right corner. Top right corner. And we want to add an action here. I'm going to go into result. And we want to set this equal to retrieving the status of the API because we want to see whether or not we're actually getting anything. So I'm going to click into text and we want to set equal to and the way that you access the string expression for the API, you want to first type in the name of the extension, which is voice recognition, and then you'll see retrieve status. And you can auto complete it by pressing tab and it'll automatically auto complete for you. And now that we have that, I'm not going to test it just yet. We want to see what happens when the voice recognition actually recognizes a word. And the way that we test this is we add a new event, add a condition, go into our other conditions, and we want to see what happens. Well, we want to do something depending on when it hears a word, which you use on voice recognition success. I'm going to put trigger once because we only want this event to be triggered once while it's true. And I'm going to add an action, and the action that we're going to do is retrieving the result text. So I'm going to get result, click into text, and set this equal to, I'm going to type in voice recognition. And you don't want to put retrieve status. You want to retrieve the result text. Basically, whatever we say, which is retrieve result text, whatever we say is going to be put into our text object. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we want to actually do something. So how do we actually make the player jump now? I'm going to once again put Shift A to add a new event. Or you could right click and add and then put a new event below. But now we want to test. Like, we want to check whether or not our voice is equal to jump. And then we want to jump. So. I'm going to add a condition, and the condition that we want is we're going to check if result, the text, is equal to jump. And when you're doing these texts, make sure to put all lowercase because when you're doing the voice recognition, and make sure to put quotations because there's a string value, you want to put lowercase because uh, when you're using the API, there's no uppercase. No matter how loud you talk, it's always going to be lowercase. And we also want to put trigger once, then a copy and paste this. And we want to put trigger once while true. And how do we make the player jump? I'm going to add an action, click into player, and then we're going to scroll down until you see simulate the jump key. Simulate jump key press. And this will work, but we're going to run into a problem when this does happen. Now, if you've actually previewed right now, you're not going to be able to do anything because GDevelop does not allow you locally to access the voice that access your microphone. So no matter how many times I talk, it's not going to do anything. So how do I actually test my game? Well, you need to have Google because from my testing, that's the only browser it works on. And you need to go up here in the top left corner, go into File, and then go into Export. And you want Export on Web. You want to do a quick little export, You're not a full export. You want to generate a new link. And this will generate a temporary link of a game that you can play, of your game that you can play. And this works because the browser allows you to access your microphone. So I'm going to hit Copy right here. And now the link is copied. I'm going to go into Google. And I'm gonna, what you want to do is go into the URL and copy and paste it. You can use Control V or right click and paste. And it will load up. And I'm going to say jump. And it said that. But here then you see nothing happened. 
So I'm gonna once again refresh. Jump. And you see that the player just jumped. Now there are problem. There's a problem here. If I say jump again, jump. Nothing happens, and that's because we we have no loop of it listening again. It has to listen again. So now we have to set up the listening loop. That's what I'm gonna call it, the listening loop. Now we need a variable that controls when the game starts to listen. So I'm going to go into our scenes once again, or our project manager. I'm gonna go into our untitled scene, and then edit the scene variables. I'm gonna add a variable, and it's going to be called listen. And this is gonna be a Boolean variable, because it's only gonna be either true or false. By default, we're gonna have it equal to false. And what we're gonna do is make a loop of what's going on. Now first, when listening, we're gonna I'm gonna copy and paste this here, actually, our beginning of the scene. Basically, listen is going to do the exact same thing we're doing at the beginning of the scene. It's going to listen for speeches and then set the result text to be the retrieving status. So I'm going to delete at the beginning of the scene here. I'm going to put other conditions, variables, scene variables, go to my Boolean variables, and then put listen. And we want to check if it's true. And now we want to also put trigger once because we don't want this to keep repeating or the game will crash if you, if you keep repeating voice calls. So I'm going to paste it under here. And now that we have the command whether listening is true, now we have to actually set listening to true. So what we're going to do is after we say something, after it retrieves the result text and it actually like does the jump, we want to wait an extremely small amount of time and then set listening back equal to true because we have to process it first. So I'm going to go into other actions. We're going to go into timers and time. And then we're going to wait X seconds. I'm going to wait 0.1 seconds. It's a very small amount of time. You can make it even smaller if you want it to react sooner. And I'm going to now add another action under it. And then click into variables, scene variables, change the Boolean variable, listen to be equal to true. Now, we can't just stop here. You might think, okay, we're done. We have the loop set. But we don't have the loop set because if we do this once, it will set listen to true. And then we'll be able to talk for like one more time. But then, since listen is already true, it will not run this event that my mouse is on right now again. It will not run it again because listen is already true. So we have to first, when the voice recognition is a success, we have to first set listen to false first. Because if it stays true, it won't feel the need to actually, it won't actually use the action because it's already true. So you have to set it to false first, then set it back to true so it can be refreshed. So I'm going to put control S. You want to save your project first. We're going to generate a new link. Export it. Because you have to generate a new link when you update it. So I'm going to generate a new link. Wait for the generation. It shouldn't take too long. Once again, I'm going to, once it loads up, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy it here. Go back to Google. And I'm just going to actually be in this URL. And then copy and paste it once again. And now I'm going to use it. Jump 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 and here you have it that's how you do voice control in gdevo but now some tips just some tips when you're using voice control of course there's kind of always a slight delay because it can never be completely consistent because always trying to listen to what you're saying next the first thing when you're making a game with voice control i do not recommend you put key features of your game using voice control like the players should not have to walk using voice control or jump using voice control because your voice is not fast and cannot retrieve it that quickly so you need to use it more scarcely and for like singular events that are not commonly used like let's say you need to open a door once you get amount of coins or keys and then you say a certain word and it'll automatically open that's a better way to use it than trying to use it in commonly used gameplay features you want to use it rarely another thing is if you're going to use it for something common like jumping over something you want to make sure the game is kind of easy because once again there's delay in between so it's never going to be consistent when it comes to your timing so don't make anything extremely timing based or it will never be consistent due to how inconsistent it is when it comes to listening so that's how you use voice control in gvop if you enjoyed this tutorial make sure to like comment subscribe hit the notification bell and comment down which tutorials you would like to see next and also if you enjoyed it just make sure to just subscribe i mean what else are you gonna do you're gonna just keep watching you could leave if you want to but just subscribe just be a little bit generous but i want to thank you all for watching and i'll catch you in the next tutorial see ya